I'd like to call to order a special meeting of the City Council Satellite Beach, January 17, 2013, approximately 6.30. We're here to discuss, take action on a letter to be sent to Bavard County School Board referring, referencing proposed school closures. Lorraine, would you like to start? Since you're sure. Um, first of all, I want to thank Laura Kennedy and Courtney Barker. They really bailed me out. <laughs> this, is a, this is not a, a simple issue with the uh, concurrency and all that stuff. And um, I was a novice to this, the school stuff. I, I know more about dog obedience schools than I do about the public schools because uh, I have no children, but and lots of dogs. Um, but anyway, this is a letter um, that uh, I wrote with their help. And in addition to that, uh, this document that you have here is uh, backup uh, information that they prepared. And uh, the vice mayor is going to be making the presentation at the uh, meeting, the school board meeting on Tuesday. And um, so, Mark, um, this sh background stuff should be helpful to you. And I would suggest that if you need further information, I'm, I'm going to volunteer because they're shaking their heads yes, Laura and Courtney, uh, that you can meet with them. I will not be at that meeting because of the Sunshine Law issue, um, but they would be able to provide you with more information if you felt that you needed some more. Are you guys around this weekend? Okay. And then in addition, just as a point of information, uh, this is the letter on the Brevard County um, letterhead that was sent by um, Commissioner, County Commissioner Fisher. Huh? Oh, yeah, he did, didn't he? Okay, then this is from the county commission, signed by the county manager, Howard Tipton. Uh, that's the letter that they sent. I'm just including that as uh, more information to see, show you how they're approaching that. And then also at our place tonight was a document that the city of Titusville has prepared um, <clears throat> um, stating their position on this issue. So I just uh, provided all these various documents to give you information. I have a question. Um, you mentioned Mark is going to go to the meeting, but we can't go because of sunshine? No, 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 no. No, we're all going to that meeting. I, I, just... I can't meet with Mark gotcha. to give him more background information okay. outside of a public meeting. All right, I understand. Any further comment on the letter from any council? I think the letter does a great job. Joe, do you any comment? Of addressing the issues. Okay, Mark? No, I'm good. Everyone? Okay, it's time to open up for public comment. See the letter? Here you go. It's pretty short and shouldn't take long. Well, in the meantime, I'll move that uh, we approve this letter as submitted for the mayor's signature. I'll second it. I have a motion by Councilman Gott, second by Councilman Montanero uh, to approve the letter. Any further discussion? Or none, let me just give it a second yeah, here for them to read it. Read it. Thank you. I did want to um, 
different to me from the first page you might you might be looking at different years because I gave you two yeah, we have different years. Uh, this is 2015 16. I got 14 15 no. he's got 16 17. <laughs> there's only two sets so I'm just going to give you a little bit of the information about the numbers and the numbers that we have and then we'll go through the numbers and then we'll share 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 the 14, 14, 15, 15, 16, 15, 16, 14. I got them both. You got them both. So 14. Okay. Yeah, I think you're not You got an extra 16, 17. We'll take that one because you got that one there. All right. This is, this is 13. This is 16, 17. So that goes over there. Okay. And this is the, the top one. Yeah. Right. So you can have a chair <laughs> Mark, I think you should make sure you have a You'll full have a set. One, yeah. I got 13, I got 12, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you can see by the maps that the current data in five years, these five is overcrowded, even without the school um, So we have a significant issue with the current year and a significant issue with their answer to concerns would be portable. Um, which is not consistent with our comprehensive plan with the fire department this past. So um, we have a lot of problems with the way they've done it in terms of process as well as all of their data. And because of their process and their lack of wanting to work with us and you know, get our input, um, we have had no time to go with the concerns with the data, with the data, with them. Um, so that's the, basically the process that the city of Titusville has used. Um, and has notified the school board of it. Um, the county commissioner has agreed to take it to the county commission as well, and they have sent off a letter. Um, and so we're, uh, you know, making sure that all of the cities get copies of the letters that we've sent, make sure that we're all on the same page. And um, if you have additional questions, please give me a call. 
Just, just for informational purposes, just reading this. How is this interlocal agreement for public school facility planning and concurrency, how is it supposed to work? It's supposed to work, basically it establishes a capital outreach committee, of which I'm a member. Okay. Most of the planning directors are members. Some of the cities that don't have planning directors, they're city managers and members. For example, Jeff was at the last meeting. Um, so, so all cities participate in it? Okay. Um, all of the municipalities and the county sign this overall agreement. Okay. It was developed in 2008 in the state statute. Um, now they have relaxed the rules from the state standpoint. But unless you take it out of your conference plan and unless you alter your local agreement, all of those provisions still stand. Okay. So um, that process, basically, the Capital Outlet Committee is responsible for reviewing the five-year capital facilities work program. I think I should say work program because I think that's busy, but work plan. And then uh, it's also responsible for reviewing all closures, renovations, and expansions, as well as new school sites. And that's to, for the purpose of school concurrency. So the minute the state side our building with their capacity, we have a right to intervene in their processes. Um, and that's what this, this, this interlocal agreement lays out. Now what they did this year, <coughs> well, for, I'll give you an example, last year. Last year they sent their capital facilities work program to us in August, late August. It usually gets us about late August, early September. It's we emailed out to all the committee members. We have about 15 days to review. We schedule a meeting, and we all review it. We have comments. Sometimes we have another meeting if we need it, um, and then they start moving forward with the workshops and things with the public when there's a closure. And that's what happened when they closed Riverview. So we had months of in advance notice of this occurring. We had a lot of time to ask questions. Um, we had a lot of time to argue <laughs> and, and state our case. Um, in this case, we had the Capital Facilities Work Program that said they weren't going to close any school. Okay. So nobody had a comment. There was no road renovations. There was no new school sites planned. So uh, we put in no comment and we didn't have a meeting. <coughs> and then after the election, then after they were closing school, and it took them two and a half months to schedule the meeting. <coughs> after they've had all the workshops, after they've, you know, had, uh, <coughs> frankly, two weeks before the last public hearing. So there's real no time for us to include any comments to them on the boundaries, on whether the school should have been chosen to begin with, or anything like that. So the position is that, the, is that the school board just unilaterally did this without consulting the committee or going through the normal process with the municipalities? Okay. All right. Gotcha. Not, and those processes are spelled out not only in the local agreement, but also in the local agreement. There's two policies that are related to that. Okay. Okay. And we all adopted the same Courtney, what's the acronym in here? It says permanent fish capacity. What does the FISA mean? <coughs> I mean, there's nothing in here that tells me what that acronym is. Or an inventory for schoolhouse. Florida inventory for schoolhouse. Basically, what um, permanent fish capacity means is a permanent student station, meaning a desk and classroom. That's permanent. Um, the relocatables is included in the total capacity. Um, the state law changed where you could, the school board would have to include portables if they were contemplating that within their plan. But to be able to contemplate in their plan, they have to be consistent with our plan. And right. they haven't changed our plan yet. Okay. Thank you so much. <coughs> Any further comment, citizens? Here and none, I'll close it, bring it back to council. Council, any further? Uh, each of you were sent or emailed a copy of the interlocal agreement <coughs> and uh, the specific language. <coughs> the specific language regarding the closures in the COC, which is the Capital Outlay Committee, says when the need for the closure of an educational facility has been identified by the school district, 
the COC will review the proposed change to determine the impact the uh, closure will have on the adopted level of service for schools and provide a recommendation to the school board regarding the proposed change. And that never occurred. <coughs> Any further comment from council? Hearing none. Councilman Yes. 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 Yeah, I think I got a yes. Yes. yes, motion passes unanimous. Before I close this meeting, just a reminder to council, uh, photos are at our next council meeting. If you can do anything, Brian, please. Um, Give me plenty of time. What, 615 was the photos? Yes. Okay, just so everybody, I don't forget before the next meeting. Okay. Let me ask, um, what are we doing Tuesday now? Do we have to be there at 530? Do we want to? Right up. As, you know, I mean, I'm, right. willing to, I'm willing to drive somebody or okay. drive. Well, let's okay. we'll arrange it. Okay. 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 Uh, hearing no further business, we'll close this meeting and start the next one at 7. <coughs> i got to get a higher chair. I'm like this. Right. Good evening. I'd like to call the order a city council workshop with the Comprehensive Planning Advisory Board in attendance tonight. Thank you for coming. Uh, Satellite Beach, January 17, 2013, approximately 7 p.m. And welcome, Danette. Thank you for being our recording secretary today. Um, we're here to uh, go over the comprehensive plan amendment presented by Mr. LaRue. Um, before we get going, since this is our first meeting we've had together and the name tags aren't up, if we just go around and if you'd please introduce yourselves so we get to know you. I'm Casey Haddock, Little Maple Drive, I'm a Vice Chairman of Comprehensive Planning Advisory Thank you. Tom, who's the Crawford Dick Roberts? Tom, Tom, Tom Burks. Mike Dapper. Alan Lamont. Tom Johnson. Thank you for being here. What was your first name? Mark. Mark. Okay. And I, um, the gentleman sitting next to you, Don? Ken. Ken. Ken Lundin. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, turn it over to uh, Jim to give us uh, an update on uh, the agenda. Thank you, Jeff, uh, Mayor, and members of the Council, and, and members of the CPAB. Uh, one thing, uh, just to remind everybody what, what the, our process is, is that we had an opportunity, and we still have an opportunity to update the comprehensive plan and what you have before you tonight in a workshop fashion or some of the revisions that actually had been reviewed by the, your local planning agency, gosh, way back last year in certain times, and then come before you with a couple of workshops as a council, or at least one workshop in a public hearing, and you requested that CPAB, it's enough time to go by the, where they were to look at this uh, themselves to see if there's any changes as time goes on. There's always a few changes that you would have and reaffirm what they had recommended before. The process, once we go through our workshop tonight, would be I would recommend that we set a public hearing, which is called a transmittal public hearing, probably uh, the first week or so in, in February. And then they would transmit the revisions that we're talking about for the changes to the comprehensive plan that we would want to be in line with the legislative changes and what we feel is best for satellite. That doesn't end things. As you know, many of you have been on this before. It does give the, it's, the process now is a little bit better for the state in what they call an ex expedited review process. They get to make comments, but they don't get this big, long work. Some of you have been around long enough to know that big old report and what you can do and can't do, et cetera. It's a little friendlier than that, and that's one reason why we wanted to be timely in getting that to them. And then it'll come back, and then you'll have another public hearing that would be the adoption public hearing you're familiar with. I didn't mean to take long to do this tonight, but at least it tells you that process and how everything fits. Um, if you don't mind, uh, you do have a comprehensive plan book that we gave you. I can maybe go over some of the highlights and some of the, the LPA members can chime in if there are uh, things that they want to want to talk about. First one, in the future land use, remember we had recommended hotel motel use. I'm looking at page 1-1. One, one. 
in your document, and the only thing that the uh, CPAB uh, did in, in terms of uh, references to make sure that uh, we ended up having um, <coughs> west of A1A as added to that particular policy at the bottom of 1.1 that that makes sure that your hotel usage is limited to some extent. And I think that's a good deal. And when I uh, say what you all did from the LPA standpoint, if anybody wants to reemphasize something, I'll let you speak. From the board. <coughs> Otherwise, I'll keep rolling. Anybody else? The changes you have on 1-2 or, or basically changes that that uh, are in the other version that you had. The only thing that we did do is make sure that on commercial and services, the maximum impervious service for the development within this category shall not exceed 70% of the site. And we left that the way it is without adding new development or old development. It's just plain statement of that, of that sort. No further changes on that page. One four. There is a policy 1.111 where we went back to the language we had, which was shall encourage. Uh, Mr. LaRue, yes, excuse me. Um, yeah. 1-4? No, at 1-2, I've got this at the bottom of 1-2, it's a red uh, edition. <clears throat> and several changes on 1 3. Yeah, 1 3 has the town center mixed use. I'm sorry. Uh, segment. Right. And, and these are changes that we had before that hadn't changed. I was only highlighting the ones. I guess I, I should probably treat these as. Yeah, I'm sorry. Then let me back up a little bit. That's all he's highlighting. And all of these things, all of these libraries in here were this one. Oh, I, yeah, you need, bit, you yeah. never go back. Let me let me go back though. I, yeah. I apologize. I, I, I know apologize. what you're doing now, but no, I apologize. Let me go back. General general mixed use policy at the bottom of one two, of course, is uh, what we had, had, had made sure of is that we had the category of mixed use that was general in nature and not just confined to a town center. That that you remember from a redevelopment standpoint, we wanted to have that. The only limitation that we last looked at with the LPA was to, to, to make sure on the, on the hotel use that it was west of, of A1A on, on the hotel use. That was the one on 1-1. One, one. The general mixed use, I don't think, had changed at all from the last time. Is that correct? Any questions on that? Uh, from a planning standpoint, you want to make sure that you have a general mixed-use category to allow you to, to put it wherever you want to in terms of map changes. Let's say we, as we get into the future with the 100 acres or whatever, you now have a general mixed-use category that can, can be. I, I have a question. On the 70 percent, um, I, I understand that on up north on the 100 acres where you know, there was no pre-existing development, but it's a, it's a big issue here along South Patrick Drive and A1A to meet that, to be under that 70% impervious. Well, you could, and in our redevelopment plan, we're talking about shared use of retention basins, things like that. So it that might need to be looked at again because it really does affect the narrower lot, lots along A1A and South Patrick Drive. And that does reflect your current code today, which would, would be, if you wanted to change that, you could change that in the redevelopment area and make it a higher. But you're area. restricted to 70% in your comp plan. And, right. Right. And, that, and I'm just saying that, that that presently is what you have in your land development code now. So and that's been a problem in the past. So I really think, because I think the redevelopment plan is going to encourage co-sharing of retention. Um, and so it's putting a restriction on properties that really is unwarranted, especially in the redevelopment area. No, totally. <clears throat> it's not just retention. It's green space. You don't want to look like South Florida. You've got six blocks <clears throat> that doesn't have one green thing growing on it. 
And the intent is to have some bricks. What's that percent then that you? It's 70 uh, percent impervious, 30 percent impervious. What I'm saying is, what is that percent you would like to see? It? Well, I, I just think in the comp plan you should allow some flexibility that would encourage shared use, shared use of open space. Um, you know, if you have open space in between two properties, and you're, or you're sharing parking, what, what's the big deal? I just think it's really restricted in the, in the downtown redevelopment areas. Well, what are we going to do? I mean, we've, we've got some disagreement. Well, um, there are a couple of things you can do. You, your current code, I, I think you, you want to see an impervious area of, of limited amount. You don't want to end up seeing an impervious area where you don't have any. So right now, you currently have 70%. If you end up wanting to have something for a redevelopment area and there's a way to actually have less than that and still you feel comfortable with then you can come back and change that for a small area but i think in most of your commercial area now that you you do have 70 percent i'm thinking um procedurally here uh this is a workshop so we can't do motions and make decisions right, 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 right. um <clears throat> uh, but at some point, we're going to need to adopt this thing. Right. Um, and so, um, procedurally, how do we want to proceed? You, you have the public hearing, transmittal public hearing, which would be probably your first, your first meeting in February. Okay. We certainly have it. We have some specifics as to what what would be uh, exceptions for the general impervious area of 70 percent we could we could have that information and we could talk about that okay when when uh you give us a clean document that uh we can use for an ordinance will you also have a list of those areas where there was some disagreement uh like uh councilwoman dean and thinks it should be uh um less than more than 70 percent um and there are others that probably would disagree so we we need to have a vote of council on that so if you could give us a list of the things that there is some disagreement on now and then when we come right. to the ordinance time we can take a vote on what we want to do right we would have a staff uh, work up document that would actually say what the consensus is or, or actually what what the items are that need to be decided or alternatives yes i mean we're but, just for reference, I believe the residential limit is 50 percent, at least in most single family areas on quarter acre lots. The other thing about the wording of this is the maximum burglary surface for development within this category. Is there a development not on a specific piece of property? So in the, in the case that um, Dean is uh, speaking to, it might be shareable across the development rather than applying to one specific property within the development. Yeah, I think it just needs to be clear. Um, because we are trying to encourage redevelopment and, and it's, it's, a, it's a sticky issue when it comes to that impervious surface. I mean, in the past, some of the lots were maxed out and yet now the businesses are gone and we're going to make them, require them to do the 70-30. So you're just going to have to be flexible if you want to see uh, some innovative uh, things come into this community. The other thing we need to check into is whether St. John's We just got to check. And John, you need a microphone. We can't hear you. The St. John's probably would get involved on that. We'd go in for permit, basically. redevelopment areas you can have um, several floors of something and still have some pervious areas so it will probably be something that we can work out. We probably need to see some specific examples maybe of, of things and that would allow us to be able to do that. And one, one, ex one example that we, we already have in the city is the um, building that Barry Wallingford built across from the A-frame on A1A. When that place burned down in the 90s in a hurricane, and he came back to the city to rebuild that building. 
um, we ran into the, the exact things that, that Councilwoman Deanan is talking about. But there's inno innovative approaches to how you can do it. And what he did was he put the parking underneath the building and it, it allowed him to meet all the requirements. So, you know, I, I realize and I, I'm one of the first people that will agree that there are a lot of constraints with some of the properties that we have along A1A. When the Dairy Queen went down, they came back into us and they, they looked at rebuilding a Dairy Queen brazier or whatever they call them. And he wasn't able to put the size building that he wanted on there because of the constraints that you're talking about. So, you know, there are some issues here. Uh, I'm not sure um, whether this number is going to address them or not, or whether sharing um, some of the things with adjacent property owners is the way to go. Um, I think we're going to have to be innovative in how we approach these things going <coughs> forward, especially when they come before P and Z, um, you know, when they, they finally come up with plans for properties. We're going to have to be a little bit flexible in how we handle these things. And sometimes you can have a range, and, and that, that is something as well. The one thing to point out is that before your comp plan had 60% purpose error when your land development code had 70. And, and so the first thing was, hey, you should be even with what you have as your land development code. But the point is well taken in terms of some flexibility. One other option that we could consider is similar to what was done for the residential codes, and that's to allow an extra 10% coverage with papers. Mm -hmm. We used to have a, there's the 50% cap on the residential lots, and then it was increased to 50% plus 10% of the area with neighbors, so that they give some uh, porosity, and I think it's more attractive than 50 elements anyway. The other alternative is that you could specify a certain area and have a, a, a actual impervious area for that as, as well, although you have large areas that are the CRA areas, but I mean, you certainly could do that. I think the biggest areas we're looking at are along the A1A corridor. South right. Patrick has a couple, but they don't have anywhere near as many as on A1A. And, and they're all on the west side of A1A. And the only caution I have is that you don't want to end up having a willy-nilly where every person, every area has an impervious area that's less than what you want in terms of the, uh, but that's, okay, so, so what I think I have as far as my instructions out of this is on each one of these that we have an issue of there may be alternate, so we'll have that as a, as a memo for you at the public hearing. Yes, thank you. Is that fair? <coughs> yes, sir. And again, you'll have another shot at it. Even though we transmit some and maybe we're not in full agreement, we, we still have a public hearing that will come back after the after the uh, okay. review. Okay. Please check with everybody. Is that okay? Sounds, Sounds good. good. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I know I just want to ask you, uh, I noticed throughout here, sometimes you say the city will and sometimes you say the city shall. What's the difference? What's the difference? Uh, we probably should be consistent on will or shall, either one. Should, should be shall normally. Yeah. Well, one. what happens is, if you think about it, you've done policy changes during the years. So it, it sometimes uh, lawyers prefer shall and some will, but we, we should probably have shall. Yeah. I think nowadays yeah. it's shall. Yeah. Well, well, shall is mandatory. Well, so is will. Well, and, but I'm just saying, if yeah. you interchange them, but, but then may is may. So yeah. you have to be careful when you use the word shall or will. Can you do a word search and just change all the wills to shall? Does no that, problem with Does that, that have to go forward for approval? <laughs> uh, I, unless there's no objection on that. Any objection fine. from council? No, I think it's a good idea. I think so, too. I, I have a question on one, too, because this is the future land use element, and the, the future land use map is kind of the blueprint for the for the city. It's not the zoning map, but yet you have designations of post office, schools, library. I've, I've never seen anything like that before. Typically, you have residential, commercial, industrial, public, <laughs> conservation. So I'm not sure why in the future land use element you're specifically designating specific parcels as post office, even church. So you're really limiting the future land use of certain parcels by designating them as church. Um, and if, it, if a church goes away, then you're limited to a church on that use. And that's, that's not the way the future land use map should be done. Um, Where are you? I'm on page 2-1. And you, know, you, have One, prime, two, sorry. you have a prime One, example of that right down the street where this church down here closed and then all of a sudden it was nothing there for a while. 
Right, but I mean it should be designated as commercial, or lots of times they allow, it's residential, but a church is allowed as a special exception. So here, this is Brevard County's future land use map, and it's just designated as, we don't have agricultural, but commercial, conservation, industrial, public, and residential. So you're really, we also have a, a zoning map, which governs the uses, so I'm a little confused why we went that far and specifically designated parcels as uses. Well, you, you had the general category of PF for public facilities, and that's what you have as subcategories underneath that. That's, that's why you've done it that way. Uh, Historically, I, I just hate to see. Me, but, but that's what you had as far as designations under public facility. Do you actually use those designations, or are they just something that's available? You know, and I'm not sure if you're talking about, is it actually zoned? It's public facility is what you have for it on the, and then your zone probably is institutional, is, right? Well, I know, but it should, they should be, they should coincide. Yeah, Does that make sense? Yeah, this is just in the sense this is what's available if you don't choose to make use of the. But the future land use go, is the blueprint and it governs what goes, the future land use takes precedence even over your zoning map. So you've kind of limited yourself in here to church, church, post office. That's that's not the way it should be. It's pretty restrictive. Well, well if you don't do that, you still need to put it as some kind of public facility. They are public facilities. So it's going to show as a public facility, whether it's a church or whether yeah, it's a post office. I don't think they're going to change the church into a post office. It's nice that people can look at the the, the point of the category, though, is the public facility, all those are subcategories within that, or, or identified within that. I, and that's how historically you've done it. You don't have to do it that way. You can change it if you want to. But, but that is, they are within the public facility category. I don't have them being called uh, on the future land use map as public facilities, but I don't think they should be specifically limited to the use. And you, and you can change that if you wish. Well, I'd like to make that recommendation. Let's put it on the list. And that is to not identify the subcategories within the one overall category of public facilities. So if we if we went if we went in that direction, what would the categories be under here? Institutional? I mean, John, what? How would that look? On the zoning map. On the zoning yeah. map. Yeah. And on our future land use map, if you if you look at page one ten dash ten, you see the future land use map and the categories. You have the big category, which is PF. See the big map? The PF would be, I mean, if you would do what, what the councilwoman is suggesting, you still have the PF uh, category, big map. but you wouldn't identify. Do you have a map in your? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you do. It's right here. One dash nine and ten. See right here, we have all these subcategories. One ten. And, and I also want you to look, while you're looking at 110, look at uh, Indian Harbor Beach's future land use and then unincorporated Bavara. They don't have these subcategories because it is very restrictive. If it, let's say a church decides to leave town and maybe someone wants to turn it into something else. You've been limited through your comprehensive plan as a church. So you're just suggesting between what's available and how much what we have. Yeah. You, you want a future language map to basically have carry. Yeah, as a it's just a future language map. It would, would not be identified as, as detailed as it is. You would Correct. have a yeah. public facility category for all those things that are Right. And again, we cannot make decisions here tonight. So when you present this to us again, give us what it is now versus this alternative approach. Yes. Now, can we uh, 
Shall we go on? Please. Yeah, we're all the way up to page three. Yeah, I, think, I think we are. <laughs> I certainly won't go back to two. <laughs> uh, town center mixed use. Um, we, we have that as, as uh, some change there to make sure that there is a limit of residential not exceeding the commercial space of 50% of the total enclosed space. Uh, can I ask a question on that one? Okay. Just, uh, from the, you know, if we were looking at a three-story building on the west side of A1A with commercial on the bottom floor and two floors of residential, those two floors of residential exceeds the square footage on the first floor. I, I don't, I don't know that. Why would you preclude two floors of residential? The intent was to not have somebody use this as a way of essentially converting commercial to residential. You know, putting a 20 square foot barber shop, 100 square foot barber shop, and then, you know, the rest of the building is six apartments. Well, to make it just, extreme. Why not just make it so that the, the commercial space the residential space within the building shall not ex shall not be more than twice the commercial space, and then you've basically said what you're looking for. Because I think if we if we hamstring some of these people on some of these properties on A1A that are non-conforming lots that want to develop them, um, maybe they might be able to combine two lots, and maybe they might be able to make a viable financial decision to make some kind of development on that parcel or those two parcels if they know they have some income coming in off the two floors above them. And I think we're, I think we're hamstringing ourselves if we limit it to just one floor of residential. You know, we've got we've to think outside the box on some of these parcels on A1A. The, somebody's not going to come in and buy one or two houses to the west of these properties to make them viable, but maybe two parcels on A1A, they might be able to combine them put a project on there where they've got two floors of residential, which is going to help them make their mortgage payment. You know, we've got to be able to at least provide some different things for them. And, and this is where we have to look into the future, and maybe this is the way to do it. Um, well, you can, do, you can say the first story will be commercial, and you can have two floors of residential that, you know, that will, it's twice the square footage of the first floor. And at least you're giving them the option of making that decision where they want one floor or two floors. But I mean, you know, we've got to be creative in how we address those those small parcels, or we're going to continue to have the small type parcels. of places that we have there. I think we meet the intent. I remember when we were developing mixed use parcels. I think the intent really was to make sure to ensure that the you know the bottom floor, that the ground floor was commercial. Yeah. This is already in our land of regulations in the uh, commercial district for the uh, mixed use overlay. It specifically says that your commercial has to be on the first floor with residential above it. Um, it could be decided to have to be above mm -hmm. it. Yeah, but we didn't make any provisions in that for how many floors it could be. But this is right. this is where we need to make that determination. Well, and it may be in, in many places in terms of your mixed use. It's just a question of how much concern you have in terms of the mix of the mixed use. Uh, many, uh, so I think we it's probably good that we, we got this out tonight as far as if you, if you want the residential space to maybe at times be bigger than the, the 50 percent, then, then we probably <coughs> should remove this, this underlying section that limits it to 50 percent. That's what it does. Mm -hmm. So am I thinking that this is one we want to want to have as an alternate? Because yeah, what, I, think what so. you, I think so. What we started with when we did this was we didn't have that restriction at all. You would just determine that, and you could determine that in your redevelopment standards or your LDRs. I mean, this is this is one of the biggest issues we face oh, yeah. over the years: is how do we make viable projects along the A1A corridor on the west side? And you know, if we're limiting and we're hamstringing these people's ability to do this stuff, then we're hamstringing ourselves as well. And, and this was for your town center mixed use as opposed to the general mixed use, but I don't see any reason now why you have to limit it in terms of commercial versus residential proportion. 
Um, call me crazy. I know I'm deaf as a doorknob, I'm blind as a bat. I don't see any mixed use on our future land use map. You don't have to have the mixed use on the future land use map. The general mixed use on on that is is the category on the. On oh, okay. The so you're doing the subcategory. Yeah. Got it. So I think one of our alternates is this may go away. You not limit yourself on the residential proportion to commercial. Mm -hmm. So we'll take that up to public hearing. But I'll remind you. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair. So okay. Yeah. okay. Commercial. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, your commercial on the first floor, it, it, my understanding is in your LDRs. I don't know that you need to have it. Right. It's, it's, it's in the LDRs, and uh, it, it goes on to say that the residential above it cannot exceed the gross floor area as the commercial for, first floor, but it exempts out uh, open carports, uh, garages, and porches. What you're saying is it says it can't exceed the square footage of the commercial. Yeah, see, that's 50. That, yeah, that, that's back to the 50. Back to the 50 you're back to the 50 percent, and that's what we want to eliminate. That's what I, we want I, to I, think, I think what we're saying, though, in the future land use, which would govern, if, if you do decide to take this out, there will be no limitation, and you would end up changing We, we would LDR. have to change the LDR. Yes, you would. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're, uh, I'm just having a discussion today with the gentleman uh, about redevelopment of one of our properties. Uh, who is very interested in doing mixed use, and um, this, this would help him. Uh, we, we have some challenges trying to figure out how to make it work for him. And, and I mean, you've been here long enough to know we've been dealing with this for, yeah, you know, we've been dealing with this issue for a long time. This is not new. This is something that's been going on for years. All the other requirements actually put a structure up. We really get any effect that we have going forward residential and all the commercial structure. Well, we could do too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we got any stuff in the But if you do that, you said that it can't be more than two thirds, 67 percent, how are you going to? And, and, and quite frankly, you, you don't always have to have that in your comp plan because it can be determined in your site development plan standards when you look at something and whether it makes sense or not from that standpoint. Well, you would address yeah. it, I would think, in the LDR. Yeah. The LDR yeah. should spell it out. Yeah. And when people come with plans, they go before P&Z. If it meets the LDRs, then it flies. If it, doesn't, you're done. it doesn't fly. Yeah. Is that A, B, and C underneath that? Is that out of the uh, LDRs? No, the A, B, and C that went out were, were some standards that you actually had for a particular approval from DCA, and we felt it was no longer a requirement any longer, so we took it out. That's why. And then I mean, we may not have been as flexible as we could, but we certainly did remove some of the things that were there. So that's it. Um, policy 1.16, uh, I think we, that's one that's been there for a while that we had shown you as far as not necessarily having the hurricane evacuation plans, emergency plans to correlate. Uh, one dash, one dash And so why is that stricken? It was required by these and Okay, and it's no longer required. It's a mandate that we feel that, that under the new legislation is not necessary. Okay. I'm sorry, I wasn't quick enough to okay. uh, point those out as yeah, we go as along. As we go through. That's okay. Interesting to know. Just for a point of clarification, uh, uh, we've got uh, the, the AT&C right there. There's, there are some variations to that in the LDR. For instance, the uh, airport area, the bar of one. That was in the LDR. Again, we felt that it wasn't a requirement of the comp plan. So again, most of what you're going to find is that at some point you want to revisit your LDRs after we get through. With this. Right. John, are you keeping a list of things that have that are coming out of here or potentially going to change here so that we oh, yeah. can change them in the LDRs? LDR. Because if we're Looking at that one there, we want to make sure that's consistent. Uh, if we're talking about doing these, 
residential units above commercial. We want to make sure that we can go back to the LDRs and get those done. Okay. Uh, one four policy one point two three. We're okay to move to page four. Uh, I think it went from a shall to a may because we felt that it was a little more flexible for people. If you're talking about an incentive plan, you, you certainly uh, could do that to encourage people to reduce or eliminate conditions of light. Again, that's part of your whole CRA approach to things. Uh, you would encourage an incentive for people with non-conforming buildings to redevelop and, and do that in that, in that way. Um, may is meaningless. You know, the city may go play the lottery. Um, there are about at least a million things the city may do, but you don't sit and make a list of them. Uh, so to say that somebody, it's, that the city may do something, has, you know, from a legal perspective, has no meaning whatsoever. Um, I noticed that throughout here you talk about when you don't say shall or will, you say uh, shall encourage. Shall encourage. Right. Um, but, you know, this provision either needs to have some teeth in it or it needs to come out because May says nothing. So why don't we look at changing it to shall encourage and incentive plan? Does that work, Mr. LaRue? You put shall encourage? Uh -huh. Does yes, that work? that certainly. So, you, you, now just remember what that is, is, is a more positive action. Yeah, yeah it is. It could put expensive burdens on the city that I would recommend we rethink. So we shall encourage incentive plans to make those on the vote. That's true, too. Because we still can't. We're just not forced to. See, a lot of these you have to look at what the comp plan is, is always played a balance game between what was required and then if it's required in the plan and fully spelled out, then you have to do it. You're responsible for it. And I understand you're the wishy-washy, but the, when you're wishy-washy, if you may, you may do it, you find that it's any appropriate for a redevelopment area, but sometimes they're not. Nobody can come back and say citizen or, or DEO, even though we think that they're not going to do it now, can come back on us and say, you know what? We don't see an incentive plan for, for, for areas that are blighted under your CRA and you're not consistent with that. Where is your incentive plan and our audit of your CRA plan? And that's kind of why, I mean, I hate to be called wishy-washy, but that's why the May is you come a little bit further, shall encourage, put you a little closer to, the, to, to doing it, but not, not quite as wishy-washy as May. But. Okay, Mr. LaRue, that's one. Okay, I'm sorry. So <laughs> leave it as May? Yeah. Leave it as May? Yeah. No, you give me one May? Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. I mean. That's a big win. <laughs> that's one. Yeah. I'm keeping the score. <laughs> Anybody want to get me out of the trouble I'm in on that? <laughs> All right, move on. Move on. Okay, one, one five. Policy one point two nine. Um, oh, I have, I have one question. Sorry. Back to the one two four about the prohibition of marinas classes. Isn't that all done through the LDRs? That has been in there since the first plan was made, and it's consistent with the first policy ever put into this. And for the first ordinance enacted in the city, it puts very strict rules on what will and won't be done. That's a, a tenor that you had in your plan, that, that if you want to continue that approach or tenor, that's an existing policy. I mean, I, I, that, it's not me to be the policymaker, but that's what you have as your approach to how you look at commercial uses, those types of commercial uses, and, and if that is your vision of what it is, then it should stay as an existing policy. If you think it's not, then it should come out. So. Well, I'm fine with it in there, but the only thing, I think it's very subjective when you say, and other similar businesses, because that's very, very subjective, yeah. I mean, if we don't want marinas, then we, you know, that's, that's, that's a policy issue, car sales, boat sales, mobile home parks, but other similar businesses is very subjective. So if it stays, I would like other similar businesses removed because, you know, things change. I think that leaves you open there. Council? Anybody else want to speak no, up? No, I'd rather leave it in there. Um, 
I, I think that it is possible to know what is similar to to those uh, golf things. Carts. And, I'm sorry. Golf carts. Yeah, but so that's the point. Yeah, but we don't want cars. We don't want boats. I don't think we want a golf cart dealer with 15 golf carts lined up along it. But what's and that, that's why the other similar has relevance because we can't think of every product that might come along. Yeah, I, I just. I can't see it. Other oh, similar <coughs> leaves it way open there. All right, then put that as one of the ones we need to decide I see on. It. I've <laughs> already got it down. That's policy one point two four, correct? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on that page? One five from policy. I'm just picking nits here, but on your one, two, ten, pursue grant. Grant should not be capitalized. Ah, uh, right. And in one, two, eleven, water bodies is possessive. Should be apostrophe after the s. Okay. Also, going back to the policy on the uh, policy one point two point three, you were speaking about on uh, one two four. <laughs> uh, it talks about the prohibition of boat sales. We currently in our LDR do allow conditional use boat sales on the west side of South Hampton Drive. It's a condition. It, it was a conditional use for a piece of property that no longer sells them, so the conditional use really should be gone. Yeah. Well, part of the LDR is you can apply today. If you had a commercial zone of property west of South Patrick Drive, and uh, you could request a condition to use four boat sales. So it's not prohibiting it. That's a problem. Well, then, you, then it needs to be removed from the LDRs. And you, you, you know. One of the two. Yeah. yeah. You, you, and, you know, because the person that comes in looks at your LDRs you and says, look, I can do this as a conditional right. use, and then the comp plan says right. you can't. Yeah. So, so yeah. then add that to the list. We need to remove from the LDRs LDR. if we don't want car sales. Because that needs to come out of the LDRs. If you've yeah, specified it's prohibited it. here, it shouldn't be in the LDRs. Right, so the direction is to move the LDRs, not the right. cops. Right. Okay. So I'm I'm getting the direction that it stays in it stays in the comp plan. Is that correct? One two yes, four. No We did have a question about other similar uses to talk about in that time. Is that yes. Okay. All right. Policy 1.2.9B. Um, that was an actual statement that you had in your comp plan before that's no longer uh, appropriate. So I ended up requesting that it come out. You can tell by that language that was language that was not forced upon you, but close to it. Okay. Uh, One point two point eleven discourage increases. Uh, we have a change there in terms of enhancement of property values in their water <coughs> contribution. It should be a possessive there or possibly there after S. Change, of course, in one three has been where we've recognized that it's ninety two percent build out when you put in the vacant property in the hundred acres and so I have a question on that. Why do we even need to include that? Because when we get become ninety five percent build out, then this is uh, I, Yeah, I, I, that's not something I I don't I don't see where it adds anything to that sentence to the that was used when 9J5 was mandating that we do a bunch of stuff. And if we don't need it in there, I guess it could come out. It's just going to become outdated very quickly. So, But that occurs quite frequently. I know. It's through yeah. the whole document. Yeah, it is. So you, you end up, and some, sometimes you have it in there to give yourself the rationale for assuring availability of land to meet needs, et cetera. But, I mean, you, you can take out the percentage and certainly say that you're going to assure the availability of land, the percentage doesn't make a difference. 
in my hearing that we want to look at those and allow you to be able to see those. Okay. Um, could, could we have a consensus that, that, that they, they can come out or? Mm -hmm. Council, a consensus on getting them out. Yes. Okay. Mark, uh, um, all references to uh, the percentage of build out can be stricken. Okay. For our public hearing, we'll try to show that. Okay. That uh, ready for one six. Go back for one second before we start all those. Does the ninety-two percent include green space and every square foot of land within the <coughs> boundaries? Well, technically, the development rights to those parcels, most of them are gone. So you couldn't build on them anyway. When we accepted a lot of this property with grant funding, we vacated the development rights on those parcels. So technically, it's built out. <laughs> this is this is private developed property. It's not city or county or anything. It's what is allowed in terms of the vacant land is available. Let me let me see if it, I think it can be removed in most cases without it being a problem. Let me let me do that, and if it is one, then we can come back. If you have green space selling, it needs to be addressed. We may want to retain that rather than doing a global strike on only two percent of it. If I see something that's inconsistent with what you're talking about, I'll, I'll bring it up. Okay. That's, that's good. Thanks, Mark. Uh, we're on 1-6, are we? Objective 1-5. Uh, we shortened up, I think, at the last meeting. Uh, we ended up showing uh, the city will encourage redevelopment and renewal uh, to that maintains the city's residential character. Anybody want to speak to that? I think that was some of our language change. That, that was in there years ago before the CRA was in, that was leading towards the CRA. That was pointing the, the city in that direction in the late 90s. I don't really think it needs to be in there. Does it even need to be there? Um, I think you probably, it's an objective. I think, I think you probably want to have that because anytime you do redevelopment, you know how sometimes we have to appear before you and say that's consistent with the comprehensive plan, a redevelopment perhaps uh, change or something, you would have that objective that's, that's talk, talking about you, you're not only encouraging redevelopment, but you're maintaining the city's re residential character when you do innovative land development regs that might be for, for your CRA area. And that, that could come into play with some of the mixed use that we're looking at, yeah. because if we're talking about, you know, mixed use on top of commercial, even though it's commercial development, we're still maintaining some, you know, residential character with that type of mixed use development. So I'd say leave it in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, structurally, you do not have a policy without an overlying objective. Yeah. So if you pull out the objective, you just you take away the ability, rid of the policies. You've taken away the ability to be able to have the umbrella. You know, for the policy. How about changing, well, I'll make the recommendation, the city will encourage redevelopment, I don't know why renewals in there, that will maintain the city's residential character. It says the same thing. So. Well, there's no difference. Yeah. Just, it will encourage better. redevelopment and renewals. That maintains, I mean, it, it's six of one, half dozen the other. One's two words, one's three. Uh, one's two. Leave it. Stay. Leave it. Oh, council. Yeah. Okay. Um, policy 1.62 was was taken out in the original February recommendations for an area. That I'm not even sure. I know that there was it is still an existing spoil spot. Is wasn't that part of the historical part? Why we took it out? That's, that was way back last year when we took that out. Um, what does that do what we did last night? It will affect that. The spoil, the whole section on spoil was put in there because DCA said you have to. If they hadn't said you have to, we wouldn't have done it. 
to my knowledge, you're not historically or currently involved in anything like that. There's no longer a requirement to have that. My policy was to, to recommend getting rid of it while we have this expedited review. So that's why I did. Okay. One six. Can I ask a question before we go off this page? Okay. Objective one point seven. That was the stuff that was added in, in September. That is. Okay. I just wanted that to clarify is, and that. That is. It now shows existing. You can tell me good job that it now shows existing because because that is the new policy that, that got us out of trouble of not being consistent with the airport. So all those policies are now existing because you separately uh, adopted those and, and sent them to DCA and then back again. Okay. Thanks to the rank of lines. We just got a letter back saying they're rank of lines. Uh, any questions on one seven? Yeah, I just, uh, uh, 176, it says uh, non-voting member of the city's local planning agency. Well, I had to go to the city charter to find out, to remember who, what that was. Why don't we just say to the, of the city's comprehensive planning advisory board, that is the local planning agency. Well, by state, they are the local planning agency, so that's why I want those words in there. In other words, state defines them as the local planning agency. And we can't. And our city charter defines the local planning agency as the comprehensive planning advisory board. Uh, the only reason it's in there is is to make sure that you're consistent with the state. Okay. All right. You are the advisory board, but you are acting as the local planning agency. Is that strike two? No. Is That's that two? Two. two? That's two. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, one eight. Transfer development. Um, I think it was just clean up language there. Was um, there wasn't anything meant to change on the transfer of development rights other than it was kind of confusing when we talked about coming from an approved district to minimum criteria, and we just put compatibility with surrounding development patterns within the receiving areas. Is it isn't the transfer of development rights in the land development regulations? Why is it? Well, you when most comp plans end up having transferred development rights is, is the overall um, enactment clause, if you will, before you get into the LDRs. You discuss them in more detail when you get to the LDRs, but, but uh, this is something that, that should be in the comp plan. I have a question about 191, and uh, John, I think you were the one that uh, noticed this, the, the words, and protect at-risk property values, um, was uh, put in there by the CPAD at their um, January special meeting on this, and that language isn't in here. Where would it have gone, mm -hmm. John? I'm trying to recall. Oh, okay. Uh, there was a, a 191. There was when I list. We listened to the tape mm -hmm. uh, within the receiving areas and protect at risk property values. That's where that would go. Okay, that's one of the ones that. That was one, one of one the hiccups. Uh, let me state for the record that I was doing my very best to get all the ones there, but when I went back and listened to the tape. The so it's the words. Thank you for reminding me of that one. Okay, so it goes under at the end of number one to approve to an approved off-site location which is designated a receiving district and protect at risk property values. Is that where it goes? No, it goes with compatibility <laughs> with surrounding development patterns within the receiving areas and protect at risk property values. Yeah, right at the end of that. At sentence. the end of that sentence. Yeah. And it's three. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> How many do I get? <laughs> <laughs> you play baseball? <laughs> yeah, I, well, I was trying to know the game. <laughs> okay. And what is significant, though, that, that uh, and I think it's important on policy 1.92, following land use designations may be considered receiving districts for, for TDRs. You have residential high density or a town center mixed use, or commercial as well. We added that commercial, and I think that's important. It gives you more flexibility. Uh, and then we added under 9.3, if so designated by city council, uh, 
any land use designation gives you the authority to be able to do that. Uh, <laughs> policy 110.1 talks about encouraging businesses as provided and allowed in its updated land development regulations. And I think that's speaking for itself. Okay, on that one, 1101, when I was attending the uh, CPAB meeting, um, I was making notes on my material and um, the words which primarily serve the needs of the residents of Satellite Beach had been stricken, and I wrote in here that that was to be retained. Am I the only one who heard that? No, you, there were some some hiccups, and I did catch, I think, three of them I emailed to, you know to Jim, but we right. may have missed that one, you too. Right. Yeah. So that stays, that, that which primarily serves the needs of the residents of Satellite Beach, that does stay. I'm sorry. So it's three to one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, I was paying attention at your meeting. Yeah, you were. You were. I, I, I have a question on the map, on the future land use map on 1-9. And it, the RLA, uh, low density residential for the 100 acres. This is the opportunity to adjust that this now. Otherwise, the developer's going to have to come in, or we're going to have to do a comprehensive plan amendment. No, you, you don't want to do it now. You want to wait until you have somebody consistently saying what they want, and then and then, then we'll do it at that point. If you, if, you, if you have a portion of it that's less than 10 acres or less, you can end up having, having that as a small-scale land use amendment that won't take any problem at all, won't even be reviewed. If you want it larger than that, you need to have the property owner and then also have Patrick Air Force Base involved as well. But you're gonna end up you're gonna end up making sure that people are gonna be in agreement with you before you change that. Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, what's the zoning of that the PUD? Was it ever zoned anything? Yeah, it was it has a PUD zoning. Right. And it's got it's got a density limit on it, but, but of you, residential. So if I were a developer and I came in and I did my due diligence and looked at the zoning and looked at that, I'd walk away. No, you wouldn't. You would say, "Does this get to be changed? How do I change it? What do we want to do?" And I bet you you've already had some conversations about that. We we talked with that Air Force Base, and they want to see it better than that too, but they want to plan for it. If we go ahead and do something. It becomes a city initiated, and you don't know what the reaction is of, of people, and you're the ones taking taking the public hearing aspect of that when you don't know what the plans are for. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't do it now. In my humble opinion. Okay. Moving on. Just on. We're almost through future land use. Uh, members of the LPA, CPAB, were there any? More of the data on the people land use that I may have forgotten. John, do you? Before you ask that, um, why are you deleting these two maps? Uh, I'm <laughs> deleting them, but they're basically, well, the coastal high hazard. Uh, coastal high hazard area map changes and becomes uh, less restrictive because it's based on the storm surge now, and you definitely are showing that map on, on figure one to the hurricane storm surge map. Where, okay, so I have this, where we're at that map. I remember the, the right. meeting where the people were out the door and this, this map was changed. Right. Where is the coastal high hazard area map? Do we have a revised map? Because the concept that is it, that is it right there. Well, the X through it or the red, the red one? The red one. So the hurricane storm surge map is going to replace the coastal that, that high is hazard. Correct. I'm sorry. But where then where is the coastal high hazard area? Which it is coast? defined in one of the policies right. as being the hurricane category one inundation area. Right. So, so the red. The red area, and you have very little areas now that are showing in your CRA that are that are actually that. Most of the areas that are showing are water areas. Right. Okay. Well, I, I, it's it's confusing because it should say yeah, coastal no. high ha hazard area is the red. So we really don't have much coastal high hazard area. That's right. You remember me telling you that? Mm-hmm. Okay, and so the, the other maps go out, so the ones that haven't changed, of course, are the 
soil maps and the other water bodies maps those are there. Soil associated maps are the same. Uh, transportation. Any anybody from the CPAB want to say anything more about future land use before we go on? Um, Before you go on, okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> taking a look at um, those maps, um, the flood zone is VEAEX5X. What is that supposed to mean? Let us come off your firm map. Off your what? Yeah, I can address that. Your firm map, which is your flood insurance rate map, uh, which is produced by the National Flood Insurance Program. Um, those are currently under revision right now. They have to apply our data out to uh, redo these maps that are currently in, in outreach and dispute resolution. And by the end of this year, we'll have new maps out. Actually, the, the I'm, I'm asking a simple question. Can we spell out what VE means? Or does it mean anything? Well, the, the, the V stands for velocity. Okay. And, um, I'm not really sure what the E stands for, but VE is... Can we at least get a footnote or something at the bottom that, that uh, says what those are? Yeah, it, actually, uh, the definitions come right off the term map. So, I mean, we can provide those definitions. X's are good. And anything with the E is prone to flooding. So we have really very little area in the city that's right. prone to flooding for the FEMA flood zone map. The newer map are going to be more favorable. They're going to be more what? Favorable. What I'm hearing you asking though is a little better coding for the for the map aspect. That's not right. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Are you ready for transportation? Just the question is because we're looking at the uh, the AE on Lansing. Is that all AE out there? No X. We don't see the islands, we just see roads. They're on the water. <laughs> right now, um, you have parts of the uh, Lansing, uh, major portions that are in the AE. However, the new permit coming out is going to remove almost all of Lansing other than the, the fringe areas, That's good. Uh, including the X zone. Any further? Mm -mm. Okay. Too long. Moving on, just a quick, quick comment regarding these maps. That was a good discussion. Thank you for seeking clarification. The CHA map, which went away, the changes in that were derived via political mechanisms. And yes, the revisions of the flood insurance rate maps for FEMA may be more favorable, but we need to keep in mind that these maps are reflecting mechanisms that reflect politics at least as much as the underlying projections of flooding probabilities in the future. I just would like to make that comment. It was based on an update from Central. East Central Florida as far as the update in the map and took into consideration some of the changes in the soil level. But you know that the CHA designation was changed because of the... Oh. And that was driven by lobbying. Mm. Yeah. Transportation. Page 221, uh, policy, or actually objective 1.1 was a change that we had way back in February. There was a continuous roadway improvement program. Uh, we took that out uh, because it was no longer really uh, applicable to us from that standpoint. So it was less restriction. The restriction didn't need to be there. So that's why that objective was out. 
if you look at it, it almost looks like it's a policy rather than a, belongs in an objective. We took away the annually review and did the review of the Florida DOT accident summaries. That's something that can be done, but it's not necessarily annually that I think was being done, so that's why we took that out. Uh, next page, 2.2. Policy demand management program to modify peak hour. Uh, we took out the action by the city that uh, was saying that it would be enacted by the city to mitigate the flow of traffic. Um, I think that's just to make sure that we're not caught doing something that we're not able to do. Which policy were you on? Uh, that was 1.17 on oh. the top of 2.2. Two. It's been a long time. I apologize. Some of these were going back trying to remember why we did that a year ago. Uh, but I think it was to not get us caught in something that you weren't doing. Anybody have any other comments on that? May I uh, suggest a uh, change in procedure? If uh, Can we uh, go page by page, and if anybody has any questions on a certain page, that would be better. then address that, All and right. Um, All right. otherwise we can move through things if, they're, if we're satisfied. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now on page 2.2 on policy 134, we don't have a citizen's ad hoc bicycle pedestrian committee. Well, um, you actually you have did. The recommendations. You had the recommendations. It was it was the committee that sunsetted after they did that. That's what the recommendations were based on. Okay. Well, I I have concerns too of trails connecting and passing with 500 feet of 90 percent of the residents within the city. It already exists. You remember the vertical streets, the, the way it was working. We didn't explain it very well, but if you look at it, it the the particular streets are are in that line. From well, a vertical standpoint. There. If we already have it, why do we need to have it in there as a policy? You can pull it out, but it looks good. What's the? I didn't hear it. What? Well, her question was whether or not you could achieve that or not. And in my understanding, you can explain it better than I do. But you had some the way the location there, of the streets were, it's possible to achieve that, not in every sense, but in most senses. When it went in, we hadn't put in the north-south sidewalks. We put in most of them. There are still a few holes. So it's not 100% yet. You pull it out. I think it's worth keeping to govern any new development or redevelopment, particularly in the north area, if new development might happen. The point of this question is it is feasible, feasible to achieve that 90%, yeah. correct? Yeah. And okay. you haven't done 100% of it, so it's not achieved. Keep, keep, keep it. Keep it. Keep yeah. it. Jim, question. At the last meeting, there was brief discussion about this bike pedestrian path plan. Maybe some of the council is familiar. Apparently, this ad hoc committee generated a high quality bike pedestrian path plan that won awards and therefore I think staff was requested to attempt to find said plan. Some of the folks on the CPAB and I know many residents in the city would be extremely interested in upgrading our bicycle paths. So perhaps city staff could find said plan. I would like to see it as well. Let's take a look and see where. Yeah, that plan is also responsible for allowing us to get grants to put in sidewalks too. So there's a, a lot of problems with attempting to bicycle along A1A, especially on the west side. And I think that a lot of residents in the city, especially those with children, would greatly appreciate some thought about resolving some of those problems. Actually, there's a uh, project, and what do they call it now, TPO, back yes. in the late 90s, and it was ranked supposedly to be 
implemented in 2013, I think, after we had undergrounded utilities. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's on the books, but... It was to go with the underground utilities, yeah. yeah. There's no doubt about that. Because the intent was not to under, not to put in a path and then come back a couple years later and tear it up in underground utilities. But I think the underground of the utilities is, is, is off the track for right now, so, you know, but we have the plan, right? We have the, we have the plan. Right. Maybe we should dig it out and figure well, out how we... Uh, probably the thing to do is bring it up to the TPO and say, forget about the underground and deal, can we do this? We should probably find a plan first, see what it is, and then move. Well... And don't let it die. We'll just take a look yeah, at it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Do we know who the South Beaches Coalition representative to the MP TPO is? It was Bill Higginson last year, but I think that changed. We had the seat, if I'm not mistaken, we had the seat while Bill was on council. Right. And he was, the, he was the, our representative. He was actually not only our representative, but he was the voting member for the South Beach right. area. Right, yeah, so I'm talking I'm not about. sure who it is right now. It transferred, it transferred there probably a year ago. Okay, yeah, it transfers every year. Okay. Any more questions on 2-2 two, two, or we're we moving on? Moving on. 2-3, any questions? Just, just quickly on objective one six, we're not uh, required to deal with SCAT anymore. No. Who says? Who says? Mm -hmm. we're, we're we're saying that we don't have to. Okay. Well, I have a question back on the map on two six. The a, B C D. I'm not quite understanding. Where are you? Two six. The the legend. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Oh, sorry. I'm way ahead of you. Two, I can't hear. Page two four. two four. We just added some language to make it clearer on things. Okay. Nothing major. Two five is your roadway characteristic. LOS two six. Okay. Yeah, we have one two six. Sure. Oh, okay. What the colors? What what? Like you have B is green and C is aqua and D is yellow, E is purple. Level of service. And what what do the colors represent? The level of service, uh, A, B, C, they, they give DOT characteristics. Now, one thing that did come out of our CTAB was that we are going to check this map with DOT to make sure that the designations are correct in terms of the level of service. That's one thing that we're going to do. They normally would give a review, but we'll be given a special ask them to look at because we want to make sure that in some cases some of the roads are not showing D when they when they when they shouldn't be. Mark, you want to roll? Yeah, just that we were concerned about codifying a level of service test on what is the lowest possible ranking on the uh, north end of South Africa. Oh, South Africa. Okay. okay. And so that's that's a normal review, but we're doing a little extra as asking for that. So that's what that is. Do you get to choose any color you want on these uh, B, C, D? Because uh, B and C look a, like the same color. So oh. if you have a choice of colors, can you make them different colors? Uh, yeah, I think we can do that. Okay. You're, you're saying E and F look an awful lot of line. Is that and I'm looking at yellow, which is on the map, and I don't see a yellow in the legend. Yeah, that was, yeah, I... I would blame somebody for the map, but I'm not sure. No, e and My F name's not on it, too. <laughs> e and F is fine, but D and C look identical. Colors. Yeah, and, and I think we no, probably have that. Looks green. Mine's blue. Mine's blue. We got okay, never mind. <laughs> Are we all right? Don't worry about it. All right, we'll, we'll check with you. No, I'm, I'm looking at 3.1. <laughs> I'm moving ahead. I'm moving ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Could you... Put some sort of text in there so that a citizen wouldn't be frustrated and figuring it out. And at least have some clue as to the difference between F and B. I.e., we need some explanatory text on some of these figures. I think so. That's too. I agree too. Yeah, I agree. That's what I was getting at. They're, they're uninterpretable without said text. Thank you. Okay. 
And I think even on the map 29, the future bicycle and pedestrian paths, the paths are in gray. I think we ought to put them in red or something so you can see them. I mean, they blend right in with the map. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll just uh, uh, down at the bottom of the page, policy 132, again, water bodies on the last full line. This should be uh, possessive apostrophe after the absence. Right. And you want to say why 131 was dropped? Um, we decided that... Uh, you do that on a regular basis, and if you needed to do that, that was something you would do yourself without having to be required to do it under the plan. Okay. That was put in there before we did the LDR review. <clears throat> okay. Uh, well, I don't think we want to do that again very soon. Okay. Questions on 3-2. You notice that many places where it used to be Department of Community Affairs, it comes out just because they're DEO now. Yeah, well, I was uh, on 141. The city will continue to utilize assessment information, uh, and you had provided by DCA. Um, that's where is the assessment information coming from? Well, they, they still have Schimberg, so you still have the ability to have that, but we're not limited to that. You know, it would be so you don't, need, you don't need to specify where it's coming no. from? Okay. The only state law now is that you, you end up having... Um, enough demand uh, <coughs> capacity for the land development as opposed to what used to be a lot more restrictive on affordable housing. Okay. If somebody thinks the way the state law now reads that if a state resource is deficit, put in a deficit position, that's the only comments the reviewing agencies have now. So it's better to give us flexibility to be able to show the data without having to be restricted to one, one place. Okay. Under 146, picking NITS, second line, short term, you've got long term, hyphenated, short term should be hyphenated. Right. Okay. 3-3. Three, three. On 172, there's that May again. Well, we got into quite a discussion, I think, last time about whether or not the hardening of commercial and residential structures is something that the city would have to promote or not. Um, it's, it is a policy decision. That's a May. Yeah, it's definitely May. we put an undue hardship on. I think that's why we solved it, I think. It, yeah. it Put that on um, uh, an alternate thing. Alternate. But it's meaningless to say, May. It's just absolutely meaningless. I disagree. Yeah. Um, I don't think things are that black and white. I think that May is, and I don't want to get into a philosophical or linguistic argument, but I don't think it's quite that simple. There is considerable discussion on this board about that. The word May in this case is not meaningless. The word May provides an alternative to the word will. So what are we going to do on this? We're, we're going to have an alternate uh, thing to look at when we uh, do the ordinance. I'm really trying to move us along. Well, so am I. And I don't, what is the alternative right now to may? May or, or shall. That would be the alternative. Or, or you will. Well, shall is equivalent to will. And the intent of will is quite different than the intent of may here. I understand that, Ken. And we're going to talk about it when it comes time to vote on it. We need to move on. Okay. We have it down. We haven't changed it. It's going to be discussed. I'm not wasting time here. Uh, 
um, the, the second piece of that was a concern that was the definition or not the definition of the word gardening. Yeah. And whether that applies to things like coastal armoring and other mm -hmm. sorts of um, practices that could lead to contention. Okay, it's one of the things that I would like for us to ex express in a vote, so if we can move on, that would be great. Is it the consensus to put it on the... To put it on, yes, we decided to put it on. It's an alternate. Yes. yes. The third part of it is it could be withdrawn altogether, as the policy. Could be. All right, moving on. All right. 4-1, you ready for Nothing infrastructure? Yeah. Okay. 4-2. Four 4-2. Two. Four 4-3. Two. Four three. Three. Four 4-3. On 4-3, policy one one twelve. That's in the your, existing policy, but yes. Yeah, and under 1113, where you have in the red, encourage the utility provider to, that would actually, that should actually be up under 1112, reading the city will, as resources and opportunity allow, encourage the utility provider to relocate overhead utility lines. That was one of, the, that was one of our corrections. Yes. I, I've got it. Okay, and so that 1113 stays as it was. Right. And the 1112 is the one. Yeah. yeah. We switch them, right? Isn't that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Start with 404. Just picking nits and uh, policy 128, your stormwater master plan to replace self stormwater is one word. Okay. Okay. Four or five. In 136, I had the word renew, a question mark there, and I don't remember now. The city show. Well, about the existing franchise agreements. Oh, I know why that bothered me. Um, years ago, um, we actually had discussions about whether Melbourne would continue to be our water supplier. Um, when we put the word renew in here, it's saying we will renew that contract with Melbourne. And I'm not saying that that would not be the, the, the appropriate course of action. I'm just surprised to see that language in here. Um, you know, there, there are other water provider, oh, providers, okay. and I realize that it's a big infrastructure issue. Um, but um, this says we will renew that uh, agreement with uh, Melbourne. Well, since you have the expire on March 10th, 2030, you maybe want to say and possibly renew. Because once you're looking at it or, or, or take out renew altogether, I don't know. Yeah, I just, I just don't think that's something a comp plan should lock us into. Yeah. Do we need it there at all? I don't think so. You want to mark it? Yes. Mark it for maybe removal, please. Okay. okay. You talking about the policy? Yes. It's an existing no, this, policy that you've had for a while, so it may not be but it's, relevant. It's not relevant. Yeah. yeah. I think, again, this was probably a 9J5 driven policy. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's good. We'll, we'll come back to it in the public Okay. Uh, any more on 4 5? I don't know. Again, so casting. How about four six? Jim four six. We took out a lot of things that were different programs that we didn't think were necessary. If there is no further comment on four six, we've been going for an hour and a half. Let's just take a ten minute break here. Oh, that's okay for everybody, and we'll be back. We'll restart the meeting here. We're, if I'm not mistaken, 5-1. Yes, Sir. we are. And uh, those are all existing policies on 5-1. 5-2, we start.
Just another nit on policy 132. At the very end, you've got a parenthesis and a period after. The period should be inside the parentheses. Just remember on JT 13 and whatever the there is state law that talks about funds and how you would not subsidize private development or et cetera in the coastal high hazard area. The one aspect that's important to understand is that you have a much limited area than you did before, and this meets the uh, state requirements without being over restricting and we've gone over that anybody here on the board could speak to that but I think that language is what we came up with after a good bit of consideration of concern and making sure it wasn't overreaching we're good okay. and now I'd like I have some questions on four and five two right yes yes uh, policy 1.1.17 1. and I would like this added to the list it comes it comes again over that will versus may the city, I think it should say, may as resources and opportunity allow purchase or oceanfront. I don't think it should be shall or will in that case. The reason to do that that way, the as resources and opportunity allow, was the one that took us off the hook. And that type language is what got us the oceanfront to start with in the comp plan. <clears throat> I would like to add it for discuss, further discussion at the, at the meeting. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. um, policy 1.3.2. Um, Jim, I would really like you, and, and I could explain it, but to go over what an adaptation action area is. And I'm very concerned about this, so I would like to you to go over the history and I, I didn't attend the meetings and, and discuss what this adaptation air action area is to the council. Do you want to do that now or do you want him to do that no, to now? Okay. Because it maybe the action would be to have that remove or remove that policy removed. Do you have a copy of the memo that I made that one point three two legislation? I was the definition is what I was looking um, policy 1.12a is the definition of it that's out of the state language that are areas that are subject to coastal erosion flooding sea level rise or damage to environmental systems that's part of the state language for the adaptation area we don't have to by law have an adaptation action area am I it's, correct it's a policy decision it's a policy decision. It is. Can you explain to the council what, what that is and what that would mean to the city? Well, it, those would be areas that in the future that could be subject to coastal erosion, flooding, sea level rise, or damage to environmental systems. You would look at that as a concern, perhaps, of areas that you would look at, but you haven't adopted those. What these, these policies do say is that at some point in time you would you would look at whether there are some areas that you have a concern in terms of flooding or, or sea level rise and you would see what you, what you would need to do to uh, examine those areas. An example would be the ocean front, the losing beach. And what it is, according to, and Ken, you'll have to help me here, the people at the state level in Tallahassee that handle this, this is a placeholder. It's a placeholder for money. It's a placeholder for thinking outside the box and trying things that maybe are a little bit different. Let me ask this. Let's put it this way. Broward County got how much was it? Two hundred thousand dollars to work on adaptation areas. Uh, Let me ask this to Ms. Lou. Yes. Is there a negative? Or anyone could answer this. Is there a negative to having it here? No. Is no, I, I think it gives you some flexibility and it is what they call for is, is being allowed to under the state coastal high hazard area. Okay. Well, I, I want to ask the question and this is Councilwoman Dean, excuse me. You brought it up, it seems like you, ha you have a question concerning this. 
being here and what's the negative to you? Well, I would like to do some more research on it because I really didn't get a, a clear answer to what this area is, but I don't, I would like it brought up at the next meeting and I will do a research on it and bring it back to you and talk to Jim about I it. I, I have an issue law. with, I have an issue, I have the state law, I have an issue with it okay. being in our comprehensive plan. If it's an issue we would like to proceed and designate an area of the city and further research is done on it and then it's presented to us, I have it, but I don't want it put into the comprehensive plan. Okay. Um, in other words, we have areas that are designated as coastal high hazard areas. We don't have to have an adaptation plan. Basically, if, a, if from what I understand it, there's only been one done in the country and it's in Maryland. If a flood comes and an area is destroyed, that area goes back to its natural way and then you, you have an ad adaptation area for that development to go to. Not sure that that's going to work here in Satellite Beach. Okay. Well, so, we can obviously it's please. Yeah, this is important. I think it's worth a couple minutes on this. Uh, in addition, this has nothing to do with Maryland. This came out of the last state legislature, the new state legislature, which wasn't doing radical things for the Greens. The phrase is easily accessed with an entire state planning page dedicated to it. Go to the Department of what is it, Economic Opportunity now. And, and there's a whole, there's multiple pages that are there on this. The language, I was, I've been at several meetings and talked to lots of people in the state and out of the state. Everyone says it's a placeholder to try to get money. It's a way to make your efforts at the municipal level to write grants for stormwater improvements in more effective ways. I've never even heard anyone refer to Maryland. Uh, when you look at the language, I would be very interested in what's so threatening about this. I look forward to further conversation. This board has discussed this in a lot of detail. Uh, I, I, I completely understand and share what your discussions were with us. You put uh, one policy in that's four sentences and we're just supposed to adopt a, 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 an action area for this community. Yeah. So. Sorry, let me get you. It may be a little confusing that it's referenced earlier than it's actually been mined. If you go to page 5-10, oh, uh, the actual policy adjustments is in the top plan. It's an entry addition. And, and, so, and that, that's that actually what's defining that adaptation action area. That's what I was reading from. And, and then what it's saying is that as may be identified by the city council. In other words, your cultural high hazard area is the first area within that. And no, I understand other that. Areas. So it's not putting you in the position of having them already adopted. It's not a mandate from some outside organization that says this is the adaptation area, action area. It's the coastal hazard area plus something. That some other areas in the city. But, but you would identify them at, at any point in time. Does it have to be in the complaint? Uh, it, it's recommended that if you're going to have it as a policy, you're back to the same thing. You choose what your policies are. So you don't, it's not mandatory that you have it, but they suggest that you have the adaptation area if it is consistent with your particular environment. If you feel that it's not, then, then no, you don't have to have it. It's not mandatory, but it is suggested if you have this kind of problem. It seems like it's making it available as an expansion of the coastal high hazard area at the discretion of council. It is a policy, you're, you're no question. Okay. Let's, there's, no, there's no direct tie to the CHHA, and just FYI in the state language, quote, a designation in the coastal management element of a local government's comprehensive plan. Uh, so this is where you put it if you're going to do it. Everyone is looking at this as a uh, lever for funding. Or quote, I've heard the word innovative and uh, creative several times here. Opening up space to try to get stormwater improvement money, et cetera. Or goodness knows what we might be talking about, TDR uh, options, et cetera. Yeah. I, 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 I look at it differently as a, a, a property right issue and a, another uh, well, uh, we have direction here, yeah, I think, and that's what we're trying to that. more get get to tonight. So, Jim, can you bring it back? We'll, we'll make sure this is one of the areas. So, the choice that you're going to bring back is to include it or not include it. The reference that would be the main one. Yes, yeah, the, and I'll okay. bring the, the background information that the state can give you for that. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, okay. Any other Kind of went through that's point. mainly what a lot of that is in terms of the um, the definition of the slosh model that's the category one 
which defines that goes to high hazard area. Anything on 510 or 511? What page are we're on? We're on 52. Oh, I'm sorry. We're on 53. I'm sorry, five, three, I went five, back to the definition. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to make sure we were done with 52. Yeah, I'm sorry. 52. Anything on 512? Anything else? It's the same thing with the, the 1.4A1. It'll be a discussion whether it stays or not. Yeah, and, and that, that is in accordance with the, the state sections. That does quote the state sections for you. Just for the record, note the three goals. Your interpretation is encouraged, but those three goals were developed on this committee. And it does give you the sections of the statutes that apply. 5-4. Uh, <coughs> and I do know at first hand the importance of having magic words in the appropriate documents for being able to get grant money and other kinds of uh, resources like that. Okay. We're on 5-4. Yes, four. we are, and you'll know some 1.4C. Uh, there is a comprehensive merchant management plan, but we didn't think we needed to get into all the details that we had below that, so that's why that's coming out. Okay. And 1.4C was also a little bit more encouraging. Uh, and you remember we added language to protect the private property rights where it says the policy is not intended to prohibit or discourage replacement of the existing development within the coastal high hazard area and the fact that the coastal high hazard area is a lot less now makes it and, even, even more. And FYI, the only coastal high hazard area we have in the city is along the beach. So we need to be very careful. Maybe that's something we discussed because you're saying the city shall encourage population concentrations away from the coastal high hazard area, which is the beach. So you want to discuss that one? Yeah. I mean, you have your condos there, and, and uh, you know, if something happens and they're destroyed, are you going to encourage them not to? No, that's very clearly stated elsewhere. Remember, that's why we added the last sentence that you that was the input was to make sure that there isn't any problem with returning or redeveloping. It says it right there on the bottom. Yeah, I know. That was why we did it. You still want to discuss it? It's fine. I'll... I do. Okay. Five, five. I had a question about 153. No marina shall be located within the city. We already um, had that provision that talked about um, marinas and boats yeah. and, what I, and I'm wondering if this is just a duplication or should it be in here also? You know, that's, I don't know how old that is, but that's been in there a long time. And it, it, maybe it's not relevant anymore. Well, but would you just check to see if it's, uh, if that uh, idea is conveyed in that uh, um, section back in the... The future the, land use. The yeah. land is one that we had all of it? Yeah. yeah. And if so, you don't need them both, is what you're saying. Uh, no, I think. Yeah, no, and here's my thing. If it's there just because we did it some time back, that's not really the answer. If it needs to be there, fine. If it doesn't need to be there, doesn't, you know, remove it. Okay. Take a look and see if it's adequately covered in that uh, was it future land use. Oh. Adequate, we don't need it is what I'm hearing. Is yeah, that right? If you don't need it, you don't need to be. Okay. Okay. Got it. And on 158, um, I have uh, delete next to that, and I wish it I is. Could. It's it's one that we went over. That somebody listened to the tape. Okay, so 158 should not be there, should right? Should not be there. Okay. Okay. We felt that it wasn't necessary to have it any longer. We went back and forth, but everybody on the group, isn't that correct? John, you remember? Yeah, okay. yeah that was that was the third one. Yeah, uh, we finally decided to draw. Okay. <laughs> and uh, what policy 159, uh, just to make the sentence a little less uh, uh, tortured, uh, move away from wetlands to after direct. So the city will direct away from wetlands all the future da 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 the rest of the sentence. Okay. What's that again? The city will direct away from wetlands 
all future, et cetera. What, what would wet, uh, just curious, um, first of all, what wetlands do we have in the city? <laughs> and what is the wetland function for, for this policy? There's a 50-foot border around all of Lansing Island. It's a designated wetland. There's large amounts of wetlands, about a third of Sansons Island that's a wetland. And they have certain functions they perform. And there still are conservation uh, requirements for the state to talk about protection of that. So I don't know that you want to remove that. No, I, I know, but wetland function concerns me because that could be anything that flows into a wetland. Yes, it filters things. It's habitat for things to grow. Those are wetland functions. You want to? You want, yeah, there, yes, do you want to discuss farther? Let's move to move it. It's either discuss farther. Yeah, I'd like to discuss it further. OK. OK. Five, six, seven. Five seven. Five eight. Most of these are just word changes on five eight and five nine. It's just a question on uh, where do we have septic systems? There's uh, some on Shell Street. Are there? Are there still some? Mm -hmm. okay. I didn't know. Where yeah, Doctor Doctor Bismati, the uh, Department of Health guy, he's got a townhouse over there with something tanks on it. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. I didn't either. Okay. Five. Five, nine. Five, nine. Five, nine. Five, ten. Um, picking nits again, policy 192, reduce low level, low level should be hyphenated. Okay. okay. Other than that, 511. Uh, stop. 510, another NIT policy. 112A2. City of Satellite Beach designates the adaptation area. Not the adaptation, right. right. We had that before. Oh, okay. Anything else on? Yeah. Nope. The, uh, <laughs> 511. Okay. Yeah, moving on. 6 1. Um, yeah. Ob objective 1-1, one, one, uh, the city will continue to provide within its financial and budgetary capacity. What's the difference? I, I don't see the need for it in budgetary. Okay. Anybody object? Any objection on council? Yeah. Council Medina? No. Okay. Move on. Anything else on 6-1? Six, 6-2? Oh, uh, policy 1.21. Okay. Again, that's going to go back to that 70% in, in the redevelopment area and what we decide to do. Okay. It talks about important service required setbacks, blah, blah, blah. Okay. 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 Can I go back to 6-2, uh, okay, down, uh, yeah. down at the bottom, 1-3-3, three, three. Um, that, that's a torture, not a tortured sentence. I would start the sentence with the, to the extent fiscally practical in cooperation with private, no comma after with, with private, county, state, and federal partners, then go to the city will implement efforts to develop. Okay. Council? Agree? That's mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And on the six three one three eight, um, do we still need uh, one three eight? Uh, I know FCT is a thing of the past, but well, you you work with Florida Communities Trust still, don't you? Any natural areas or open space for outdoor recreation? It, it, it's probably a good one to keep up. It's okay. Good yeah, I that one. Sounds good. Yeah, Seven. How about them have grant money? Seven one. 
any questions also please then a five just to remind everybody that we did put all the school and currency things back in which we talked about doing and that's consistent with what your policy is that's why it looks like it went out and came back in is that something we want to discuss after the fact no, I think you're, I think I'm just, for information, letting you know, I don't think you need to discuss it anymore. Okay. That's right. Eight, six. Yeah, I would ask on this. Uh, we see uh, transportation drainage, direct and open space, and, you know, we are in the process of trying to come up with a capital improvements um, program or plan um, that basically covers all of the departments. And my question is, shouldn't all of those departments be in here? <coughs> Um, the level of service aspect was a, no longer a requirement for concurrency for recreation and open space. That's the only reason that was taken out. <coughs> which which one are you? No, it's in here. Which one are you? No, talking? let me repeat my question. Uh, on the uh, table on eight dash six, page eight dash six. Okay. Uh, we have in here transportation, drainage, rec, and open space. And oh, but the city's in the process of coming up with an updated capital improvement plan that covers all of the departments. And so my question is, shouldn't or should um, the comp plan address all of the departments rather oh. than just those three areas? No, because the currency and level of service only affects the comp plan elements. So, for example, you don't have police, you don't have fire, you don't have anything but the mandatory. It's not like, it's, it's almost like for your own good in implementation, you need that. But for comp plan purposes, these are the only ones that are really effective that you need to have in your plan. Okay. Drainage, transportation, recreation, and open space, but not your police, your fire, or your other departments. You certainly would have it in your own capital improvement project list in, in budget. But when I come to the comp plan, you have a reduced one for the comp plan in the five years. Okay. Is everybody else set on that? Yes. It's kind of like they don't need to have all that information or the stuff that you need to do yourself. Okay. Eight seven. Eight eight. Uh, I had a question on eight eight. Um, this uh, chart starts with 2011-12, and that's passed. Do we have a more current uh, table from the school board from the? Uh, uh, Last I checked, they did not, but we will we'll, at the adoption and we'll go into the review and then we'll find out. That's a okay. On update. Okay. Yeah, because for a while there were concurrency data that were not as, as up to date as, as they're supposed to be. Okay. Moving on then. Right. Okay. Nine one. Um, objective one three. Uh, a committee to do review with land development regulations at least every 10 years beginning in 2015. I think they need to be reviewed more than that by a committee. Um, they, that, that's, that's, a, that's a long stretch of time before you're looking at your, re your, your land development regulations, particularly in a city that's got two CRAs, or one, C, one CRA covering both commercial corridors and uh, wants to be pro progressive. So. Absolutely. Will you help us on this one? I sure can. And remember, we did kind of change the other one. So let me see what I can do with this. Okay. It says at least. Okay. You well, can do it again. every year if you want. Yeah. Fine. I just that will be a discussion item, correct? Right. Okay. Moving on. Oops. Okay. With everybody. Mm -hmm. Nine two. Um. 
134. Right. It's existing policy. Give me a second here. Okay. I, I don't know what my note means. Um, I know. The city will continue to implement LDRs related to signage to balance the needs of the city's business community with the city's desire for improved community appearance. And when I read this, it sounded to me like that's giving the uh, building folks leeway to not fully enforce our LDRs. Is that what's intended? No. Mm -hmm. No, it means that you're... Maybe the word that's bothering you is implement, right? That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> Structure? Uh, revise or... Maybe we can bring that up for discussion, yeah. the word, okay. please. I, I think I know what you're coming at. You're not giving the city the flexibility to implement or not implement. Um, you're saying, I have, let, me, let me work that. I can do that. Looking from then, that particular... I remember from 9-2 on, there seems to be no revision. Does anyone have any corrections on any of the other pages? No. Uh, I, I do. On the, okay. Back to the signage on 1-6. One, one second. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. We, we have all this information here about signs, but we, are, we have a pretty stringent LDR section. The sign section. So I'm not sure. Do we really need to have that in in here, since it's well, already been done? The, this is the community appearance element. These are your guidelines for which you have your LDRs, and that's why you would have these. If you can have more restrictive things, or it's something else that you can have when you get to the LDRs. But for this, I ordinarily would say, no, I wouldn't fool with it. But you got a community appearance element, and that's what it's supposed to be dealing with. Okay. These are your standards, and then you can develop details in your LDRs. So I'd say, you, unless unless you find a, a standard that you don't want or an approach you don't want, otherwise I'd, I'd leave it alone. And going back to 9 2, to that 1 3 4 again at the top, I think the verb you're looking for might be formulate yeah. instead of implement. All right. Okay. Yeah. Moving on, 10 1, 10 2. There's no other changes to any of this, so no, I'm hearing, say you're, is there any other changes that anyone have on there that they want to bring? Okay. Hearing none, um, since we've been here a long time, um, any public comment? Hearing none, bring it back to council. Um, so let me ask you a question here on this. Go ahead. Um, given this, our next step is to have a public review of this? It would be a public hearing and transmittal. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Looking at what we did tonight, the time that it took, and the number of questions that seem to have been brought up for you to bring back to us and for us to discuss, this is not something that might be a council. We might have a, another meeting, on it, a special council meeting to do this because rather than, rather than well, I'm just looking at you know better than us but I'm listening to people talk and want to discuss stuff and I think some of these things no seriously we're here we got to get it right there's going to be some time involved in discussion of this and to bring it to a council meeting it's going to take a regular council meeting it's going to take time understand I would propose stuff. something um, it could be a special meeting but I would propose that we start each of these things that that are going to be brought back um, with a show of hands to see where we are if there is a majority for leaving it as it is we leave it as it is and move on otherwise we could just keep debating this till the cows come home be now or when we come no, back when, to, no right. when we come back to a meeting rather than you know full discussion on everything again I mean there, um, I understand. That. All I'm saying is, seeing what we've done tonight and the time it's taken, I just don't see how you're going to do this at a regular council meeting and not be out of a council meeting with other things that we have to do in a normal amount of time. Right. But it's up to the council. I just I think. I took a Wednesday in, in between two council meetings and, and 
and do it on a Wednesday like that. Like that. Okay, I just think it's important it's enough that night. we need to discuss it. This board's put a ton of time in it. Yeah, thank you. So we need to make sure we discuss it. Sorry, but I just think that's, you know, whatever. So what would be appropriate for, for me to get with um, Mr. LaRue about how long it's going to take him to put all this together, do all that research, then let him get back to me with a timetable, yeah. and then come up with a couple of days to get back to you and let me go. Yeah, that's perfect because it's part of the discussion we had today about we need everything to have dates on them. So we, you know, this is the blueprint for the city, so it's really important. It, des it deserves a special. Well, that's why I wanted to make sure we had a meeting. We didn't rush through it at a council meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Lou, anything else you need to discuss with? The only thing I would say to you that some of the map changes and things that you have, you can see those. Those are not necessarily all maps that I have, but before we adopt, <coughs> if you give us the leeway to make sure that the. The visuals and the things that look good before we adopt, we'll have those. It even gives us a chance to do some of those during the review process. I don't want you to be disappointed in me if the blues and the reds still run together the next time you look. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Any further business? Uh, go ahead. I'd just like to thank everyone for the work you've done. And this is an enormous undertaking and really very much appreciated. Uh, Thank you so much. And thank you. Mr. LaRue, same, same to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And John thank Stone. You. And we're aware that you guys put in a lot of time discussing this stuff. And uh, I, I, for one, always give a lot of deference to advisory boards. Mm -hmm. When we set up that meeting, please, your input is wanted. If you want David to ride in here, do not do it on Thursday. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Interim city manager has that under advice, and uh, I know he'll get with us and set it up. Any further business? Thank you very much. We'll adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going over the items.